this is definitely not one of those uh, try this at home projects. In fact, do not try this at home. Um, I am uh, building a rather unique shower floor for a, an RV, a tiny home situation here, and we're trying to figure out the a methodology to do this. Sorry for the wind gusts. We're supposed to have 50 mile an hour winds today. Anyway, the uh, the shower floor is made of multiple pieces and I'm going to show you how I, how I go about doing this. I think we have a good chance that this will work out fine, uh, but it's not conventional to say the least. So stay tuned. We'll see how this goes. Since I'm used to working with uh, mud and shower pans and uh, traditional types of installations for shower floors, this is a a new uh, project which, which has its own set of challenges. So the plan is to use this frame that mounts in the space in the RV and to build up a floor that will, that will come real close to flushing out with the top of the drain. The drain is adjustable so I can raise it a little bit if I need to, but the uh, ultimate goal will be to have the tile that is laid flush out with the top of the drain when everything is complete. Uh, the trick that uh, is sort of the challenge to me is uh, tying in the shower floor with the drain with a shower pan type of uh, configuration that will allow the floor to drain if water gets underneath the tile. The shower base is created by building a box out of 2 by 4s that fits the shower area in the RV. I'm mounting a drain in that box that will sit above the holding tank the shower will dump into and positioning it so that I can also install a 2 inch trap below the drain just like I would in a residential application. I'm using a standard shower floor drain that is designed to hold a PVC shower liner in place. I can't actually use the PVC shower liner because it requires a concrete floor, but I can use another product as a shower pan. It's a piece of material from a company called Schluter Curdy, and it will work on this project. I can tuck the membrane around the drain in such a way that it will function just like the PVC liner would. With 2x2 two two strips of pine, I began creating the slope for the floor. The angles get a little tricky, but the more I begin to work with it, the easier the cuts are to make. So this basic frame and support pieces are giving me a foundation to build from, in addition to not adding much weight. My only concern is that this whole unit needs to be very stable and not flex after it's installed. I'm hopeful that the addition of each layer of material will help to accomplish that. I can't really build in curves on the floor, but I need to transition from each of the four slopes as the pieces that make up the floor come together at the drain. To do this, I'm cutting four triangular pieces that tightly fit together on top of the 2x2 structure I already have in place. It looks more challenging than it really turned out to be. Once we reach this point in the work, we pretty much were committed to going with this approach on the shower floor. So with that decision made, we turned our attention to getting the structure up and getting it dried in before doing any more work on the shower floor. So I'm spinning this video forward to get back to when we resume working on the shower floor. You can check out a previous video I did on building walls for this RV and from time to time I'll show you other facets of this project. The material I'm using is quarter inch melamine. In this particular brand, the center core of the melamine is a very hard kind of masonite product. I think with good support from the pine structure below, this should work out all right. On top of this, I'm adding quarter inch pieces of hardy backer. I like the half inch hardy backer much better, but that thickness is just more than I can use in this particular setting. So with the two inch support frame, the quarter inch melamine pieces, and finally the quarter inch hardy backer attached with liquid nails and screws, the floor is feeling pretty solid. You notice that I'm pre-drilling holes in all of these layers of material. That is to minimize the risk of anything splitting because each of these products by themselves are pretty fragile. So the pre-drilled holes allow each layer to be attached together without doing any damage to any of the other layers. With the basic structure of the floor complete, I'm able to get back to a little more normal steps for getting ready to set tile on a hardy backer floor. The slope is pretty evident from this angle and now I'm adding fiberglass tape and a layer of thin set to the joints in order to help reduce the chance of cracking at these joints. With a pretty large shower floor surface and no curbing, it's important that the floor drains well. When the tile floor is complete, the waterproof wall covering will overlay the shower floor. So when the water runs down that surface and hits the floor, it should be on its way to the drain. 
Now comes a time when it starts to get a little unorthodox again. I've never used a curdy membrane in a typical residential shower installation, but in this case it seems like a pretty good fit. On top of the hardy backer, I'm adding the membrane using thinset. Then around the drain, I'm cutting just a large enough hole to be able to tuck it into the space between the top of the drain and the hardy backer. This will allow any water that might make its way to the curdy membrane after the tile is set to be able to find its way to the weep holes in the shower flange and then into the holding tank. It's a different take on a traditional shower pan, but it seems to work in this project, at least conceptually. So after pressing the membrane into the thin set and smoothing it out with a plastic trowel, tomorrow the floor will be ready for tile. I mentioned earlier that I'd never used the Curdy products in any project I've ever done, and I'm not sure this is really a fair test for the membrane. When I do typical residential shower remodel, I'm confident that a dry pack shower floor with a brick step, a shower drain that allows for the installation of a PVC shower liner, and half-inch hardy backer installed on the walls provides about as good an opportunity as it gets for a good, long-lasting installation. If all of those products are put in correctly as well as a good installation of the tile, the only reason that shower will ever need to be replaced is because someone wants to change the look. So given that level of confidence, I've just never had a need to look for another alternative such as the Curdy products. It still seems a little weird to me to be setting tile with thin set on the Curdy membrane material, but, but the membrane itself seems to be very tough material, and I'm sure the thin set bonds very well to it, so we'll see. We ended up getting shower floor tile that was a little thicker than I was anticipating, so it finishes out a little higher than the drain, but that's fine. You just never want it to work out the other way where the drain is higher than the tile. I would have liked to have added a little more thickness to the wall finishes because the panels we ended up installing were only about an eighth of an inch thick. It would have been nice if the finished wall was a little further out on the floor tile. But I grouted the corners between the curdy membrane and the tile very well and we used silicone caulk at the bottom of the wall pieces against the floor so that should take care of any issues with water getting into the corners. So the only question remaining is how well is this going to work out? I mean, I think it will be fine, but I don't know because I've never done something like this. I'd be curious to hear what some of you think, particularly those of you who have worked with the Curdy products before. I mean, it's for an RV. I mean, I would never do something like this in a residential setting just because the other options are, are so much better. But in the case of an RV, the idea of having a real lightweight, relatively speaking, lightweight shower floor that's securely tied to the frame. I mean, I think this will hold up okay over time, but uh, as I said, only time will tell. So while we wait for the grout sealer to dry and get ready to put this thing into service, let me say thanks for watching and encourage you to check in every week or so to see what's going on around Dobbs Workshop.